Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another episode of Testing in Nutshell. This is Nirish Kumar Singh and we are talking about Jira Administrator Tutorials. As a part of this tutorial, we are talking about customization of the workflows, which requires you to understand that how a workflow can be created, edited, requiring adding status or modifying the transitions. So there are a lot of many things which you'll be understanding about the workflows itself. And then of course, creating a new workflow of your own or customizing an existing one is what we will be talking about and associating that using a workflow scheme to the project as a part of your Jira instance. So let's quickly get started and have patience to understand everything what we are talking about because if in case you do miss one of the steps then probably you will not see the changes being taking effect so be patient be attentive and have a look on what exactly workflow customization is all about As a part of this tutorial, we'll be getting into the most important concept of customizing Jira Administrator. Now that's called as workflow. As a part of this tutorial, we'll be understanding how to customize a workflow. In fact, learning how to create a new workflow, workflow schemes, and how to use these workflow schemes to associate a workflow with a particular project or issue type. To understand further, all you need to do is have access to the workflow sections to the administrator of the Jira. And there you can see what kind of workflow already exists and what your project is using in terms of the workflow scheme. Now, of course, what is a workflow scheme or what is a workflow all about? When you come to a Jira issue, then you just click on a particular issue which is already created. Then you can see that what exactly is the workflow my issue is making use of. So all you need to do is navigate to the issues section and click on any particular issue which you might be using in order to find the details of that. So right here in the status, you would see view workflow option. Now view workflow will basically showcase to you that what exactly the workflow is being used behind the screen in order to process any particular task within your Jira project. So right now, if you see, it says that once the pro issue is created, it goes to any of these status. That means you can move from to do to in progress, in progress to done. But when it is created, by default, it has a to do status as there is a transition. But here on the right side, you see that it is all. That means a task can be moved from any status to any status. And the restriction applied to these movement is what you call it as a workflow. So workflow basically allows you to create your custom progress or movement of the task from one particular activity to another activity and you do create certain conditions to be fulfilled if in case a task has to move from one column to another column. And that's what we will be doing right here in terms of understanding that. So let's go ahead and go, go back to your issue and you see that this is in progress and there are three buttons on the top. I can move it to to, to do or I can move it uh, from to do to done at any point of time. So right now it is to do. Let's click on done and you see that there is no prompt and it is just moving the status. So that's what we are going to understand more that how you can customize this workflow. Instead of hampering a existing workflow because it might be being used by a lot of other projects, we recommend you to create a new workflow to practice or create something for a particular project. And there's a button right here, add workflow. OK, so you have to be in the workflows menu here on the left side panel and click on the add workflow to create a new workflow. In, in case you want to edit an existing, there's a button here, edit, and you can do that. So let's create our new workflow so that we learn everything from the scratch. Number one, name the workflow which you're using. So say that I'm using my new workflow so that I can differentiate it with other workflows to be used and click on add. Oops. I think I made a small mistake there. Anyways, so right now I've added the workflow and you can you will be directly taken to the screen where you can find that there is a my new workflow and it is empty. There's nothing. So right now you have a button here where you can just drag and drop this create option. And I'm not sure where exactly this is. You should have come here. Okay, it seems like it is hiding here. Okay, so that's my new transition. Uh, okay, anyways, when I create this, of course, uh, it will 
automatically shift to the other location. So when you create a new workflow, of course, it will be initially inactive because it's not yet applied to anything. And then you have two options that is either you can view it in the form of diagram or the text. And then you have two options that is to add status or add a transition. I think from the state transition, you know that uh, it basically showcases the state transition between the various states where the status are called as status and the movement between that is called as a transition. So let's create a quick status first of all. So let me just mark it as to do. And these suggestions are basically displayed from the existing status in your Jira instance. So and the other one is new, which you can create right here as well. So if you want, you can make use of existing or you can create something of your own. So click on to do and click on add. So right now the status will be quickly created and by default it will be free because you have allowed it to move from any location to any location. Let's create other status which we are looking for. Probably I want to go with in progress as well. And here is a button allow all status to transition to this one. You can check that but I'm just keeping it idle right now because I want to show you something. Click on add and let's create one more. That's uh, in progress. Uh, no, it, not in progress. Uh, let's create in review. And you can see that this is a new status which I'm creating. So it is asking me to provide a description or it's going to be categorized under any of these. Just leave it blank and click on create. And uh, let me just add one more status and we will be done. And we are done. Okay, so right now I got all my status here and there and in different order. So what I'm trying to do is set up some of the things uh, that uh, how exactly this transition is going to happen. So here is a button here to add a new transition or here as well. But make sure that you are selecting a particular status in order to add a transition because the path will be displayed according to that. So say that when it is created or initially opened then my status come to uh, open state and then from open it moves to done so let's quickly create some of the transitions so from status to which status that should go to to do and name this particular thing as uh, task created all right and screen if you're using any special screen for this activity like when you move it from one state to another then do you want to you know add some information then you can make use of any of these screen which we'll see later because we have something called as resolve issue screen which I would like to show you separately that how these screens will be important to be used when moving a task from one state to another. So just leave it none as of now because I just want to move it and add. Now what exactly you are doing here by adding this transition you are telling that until unless uh, this open is created it cannot move to to do and once it moves to to do it cannot go back to open until unless I add a reverse transition. If you want to add a reverse transition, all you need to do is select the other way around. That means from status to do to status open. That's it. So if you create a reverse transition, that's it. You will have a two way path. Otherwise, you will just have one way path. Once a task moves to to do, you cannot go back to open. Now the next transition is from to do. So click on add transition and it moves to in progress after that and say that task begins okay so just keeping some user friendly names so that you find it interesting to understand and from the in progress the task can move to uh, in review once it is completed so say in review and say task completed from the person whom it was associated to and click on add now you see that the navigation step shows uh, that the task moves to this and then finally uh, select anything and just click on add review and from in review to done once we say that task approved that because any of the employees may have worked on it but probably it was not meeting the objective so you want to have another status to move down now you see that this is what your new workflow is which you just created on your own and you have several transitions here Maybe in case, you know, in review, if we find that uh, the task was not as per the objective, then you want to have a return path. So let's create a quick return path as well. That is in progress, uh, sorry, in review to in progress only if 
task reopened. Okay, and say none right now. Okay, again, I did a small mistake there. Let's uh, edit this. No, where is this one? So this is a two-way communication, if you see. There are two arrows. This is task completed towards the interview and task reopened towards this one. So, yeah. All right, so on the left side, you do see a lot of things like you can delete a transition, you can add properties, you can add triggers, you can add conditions that only if this is done, then only you should move to this. So we'll be talking about these options later. And also there's something called as post functions, which you can add once this move to this particular space, then what else should happen? So I will be talking about each one of them uh, in a different tutorial. So that's one thing. Once you're done finally with this uh, creation, don't forget you need to uh, you know submit this and uh, save it so once you are done with all the editing all right when you're done creating everything just come back to your main workflow screen and you will find under in inactive section that their new workflow is created and you have uh, the three options that is edit copy or delete remember one thing team in the entire jira administrator issue customization section that is any of these customization you will see the delete button only for those which you have created, which are system specific or template specific. You will never find a delete button next to it. That means you cannot delete that. You can probably just edit it or modify it, but you cannot delete it. You can only delete the cre creations which you have made. Now we are done with creating a new workflow. All we need to do is move to the workflow schemes to make use of it. Now this is a new workflow which is created and of course it is unassigned. So if you click on inactive, there's nothing right now. So you need to create a new workflow scheme so that you don't hamper the existing workflow schemes right now. So click on the add workflow scheme and give it a name. That is my new uh, workflow scheme. Okay, and just click on add. And you should see your new workflow being created. Now it's just refreshing. So you got here, that is my new workflow scheme and all unassigned issue types will be associated with that. So just click on assign to assign it to a particular issue type and select the issue type which you want to apply. So let's go for our customer request, which is our field and click on finish. So now customer request will use this scheme to apply the workflow or other ones will use something else which is already associated. That is go back to workflow schemes and you see that there's a software simplified workflow for the project 10. Now let's go back to our project here and see if there's anything called as changed. So let's uh, refresh this and uh, oh, I need to create a new customer request issue because this is not one of the type which is already created. So let's create a new issue type and uh, mark it as uh, issue type as customer request. Give it a summary that we are talking about change in requirement 2.1 and probably the description of what change it is. Type of request, say it is uh, feedback and create. Now once this is created, we will again go to the view workflow option here. And uh, okay, so this is created. Now I should see that, uh, let me just check by refreshing it because it should be listed here. All right, here it is on the top. So just click on this. Uh, that is your change request icon. It's a change request, customer request. So click on view workflow and all right. So what we see here is still that the old uh, simple workflow is visible and uh, probably the changes have not taken place. So let's go back to our workflow schemes. This is we are here and we see that testing in nutshell still using the software simplified workflow scheme. OK, so that means the scheme or the workflow which we created is still lying here and not being used by the customer request uh, issue type. So to do that, all you have to do is come to this workflow, which my project is using and click on edit. And then once you click on that edit button here, it will allow you to add a new workflow. OK, click on add existing because right now it is using everything. So go for my new workflow, which we have just created using in review and in progress and so on. Click on next 
and uh, let him tell that you know which issue type you are going to use this workflow specifically for and click on finish and now here you get a prompt that you know the, your draft which you created is yet to be published so click on publish and uh, in order to take that new uh, you know workflow which you created to take effect and uh, publish workflows associate and it will just migrate automatically because you have an existing issue type already created so it has to be migrated to a new workflow and that is what they're trying to do once it is all done you will have the acknowledge button to confirm that's it so team uh, make sure that uh, the step which you follow here number one is that you create a workflow number two create the workflow scheme and then in the workflow scheme go to the next section that is the project which your uh, the scheme which your project is already using and add your workflow to that and then assign which issue type should be using that if you want it for all you just have to remove this and add the new one okay because this will by default go to all unassigned issue types that's the major difference now let's go back and refresh the uh, you know customer type because it has migrated so now it should show me a new workflow specific to the uh, issue type that is change a customer request. So click on view workflow. And ta-da, we see a new workflow here. But at the same time, just to confirm you that I'm not trying to fool around, let's go to another issue type that is task and click on the workflow. We see the old one. So that's how simple it is that you have to just create a new workflow, make use of it, and then definitely uh, I create a new scheme and add that scheme back to your uh, you know the scheme which your project is using so right now here if you see that tin software simplified scheme is using testing in natural this is a project this is the scheme I just added a new workflow to be used for a specific issue type and for all other issue types it is going to use this particular workflow so that's how simple it is and this is what you can do in order to understand that well, that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to drop a comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.